So, to do a quick recap of what we managed to pull off last episode. That is, what we could squeeze in despite much of the runtime being dedicated to disclaimers and slides. We're currently about a month into the playthrough having just launched our first rocket. In our build queue we currently have a two-stage beast of a sounding rocket to carry us up above the Carmen line, as well as a plane to gather science from several biomes down in Texas. We have also, thanks to our, that first launch, managed to get just enough science to kickstart our research teams, which are currently working on unlocking better engines for us than what we have. In my eagerness to cram as much information into as short a time as possible, I still forgot to mention a thing or two in the previous two episodes, and I do appreciate this being pointed out to me so that I can address any questions you may have for a wider audience. Someone did ask about the difficulty settings of the series, we are playing with the default difficulty settings of RP1, which is the one called Normal. I should note that this is not the difficulty setting which RP1 is being balanced against, that would be moderate. However, it is the default difficulty setting you get when starting a new playthrough, unless you select one manually. This means that we are going to be progressing slightly faster than you would be able to if you played along at the moderate difficulty setting. However, the steps you'd take would still be more or less the same, with the main difference being how many KCT build points you get, you're get you getting along the way. Another note on difficulty settings, we're also running the save without remote tech delay. However, these first few years of the campaign, that should make no difference either way. But I know, I know, this introductory bit is already starting to look like a flashback to last episode's droning, so we should see what's next on the agenda. Currently, we have the re contract to get a Carmen Line rocket. Now we're already building that, so that seems uh, like a good plan. Uh, once we have, uh, once we've done that, the Carmen Line, uh, we are going to do this one as well. The reach to this a suborbital trajectory and return. So uh, why don't we go ahead and build that rocket as well as we wait? Uh, it's basically the same rocket that we're already building, number two, which it shouldn't be called, it's number three. Uh, very imaginative naming scheme we've got going on. Uh, this rocket is intended to go up to the Carmen line and return, and because we have this small return package, uh, the same rocket that is going to carry us up to the Carmen line is going to be plenty to actually get us up to the Carmen line and get back. Uh, now, if we had unlocked the XASR-1 uh, upgrade for the AeroB, we could pro potentially do this with even just one stage of these. Uh, of course, a stretched version, but uh, the same principle would apply there. And, uh, and this rocket is... Uh, well, we should have most of this tool already, because it's reusing uh, the same basic design of our rocket number two. It's just got a bit bigger payload, but it will be sufficient to actually reach a suborbital trajectory and then return the payload safely to Earth. So I believe that we are ready to start building this one as well, making sure that our VAB teams never get a moment's rest or respite. Is it respite? I believe it's respite. Yes, as you can see, we are currently money starved. There's not a lot we can do at the moment in regards to anything, really. So uh, we're going to have to wait for a while. And uh, uh, let's just review where we are on the upgrades. We're currently two points spent in the VAB, which uh, is uh, about on par for what we'd expect at this point. Uh, we want to get up to about four points in the VAB and then start spending massively into, into research and development. Because that's where we want to be headed. Uh, you can notice too that we haven't started rush building this, so we should do that immediately because the gains are the highest uh, doing that in the beginning. To explain how that works, uh, basically each time you press the rush build button you cut 10% of the remaining time of the construction uh, away. So if we were starting to rush build at like 90% progress, which I don't think is actually possible, I think the limit is to 
uh, is that it has to be at 40% progress or less. But say that we did, say that we started brush building at 90%, well, cutting t uh, cutting 10% of 10% off the build time would be a, just 1% of the total build time. So that's not a very efficient way of doing things. Uh, instead, we're going to be doing this. We're going to rush build this and launch this within the month, uh, which will get us even more science. And uh, I mean, I hope so, because we have seen, we have a few issues in this install. Uh, and as you can see, well, now this is starting to taking down. It's probably about time we started rush building this as well, because we can afford it. It's just 2,500 funds to get that so that we have that in 62 days. Fantastic. Warp this out to the pad and let's go. All right. <laughs> it's not daytime. Well, uh, whatever. Uh, you, 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 you guys, you guys like this, right? Am ambient light. Look, we can see the rocket. It's actually pretty neatly outlined against the darkness of space where it is where we're going to head with this rocket so that's very apt very uh, we're very proper uh, for this rocket we're going to totally be cheating because i know you like that we're going to be using time control here uh, to optimize our staging and uh, you could have done this with a kos script or whatever but this is just so simple to drop in and use that i figured this is what we're going to be doing instead and i mean initially uh, I, I'm just preparing for X science here to fail us again. Initially, uh, the launch is going to be, uh, well, pretty much identical, but then on the uh, second to third stage separation there, let's just, uh, we can aim camera perhaps to get at these science instruments that are offset inside here somehow. Probably aim camera on another part here. Uh, this is all technicalities. What I'm saying is between the first and the second aero B stage, which is technically the second or third stage, as I, I, I don't know, um, we're going to have to hot stage, basically light the second engine while the first engine is firing or else we're going to have fuel instability issues. But uh, that's going to be okay because we can time that hot staging perfectly uh, even though it's going to be a, a second uh, precision or, ordeal by just slowing down time. So I will demonstrate what we're going to be doing by, by doing it. We're going to be launching and uh, once the booster stage has done its, its job, uh, we're, we're riding up on this first, this first arrow B. And it's going to be burning for uh, just under 50 seconds, which is what its rated burn time is. I believe its rated burn time is 48 seconds, 47. And we have loaded up it up with about 49 seconds, which is just like at the limits. But um, yeah, we don't expect any, any failures here. We've already gotten all the signs we can get from this point. So this is a very uninteresting part of the flight, pretty much. But now, as the stage time is starting to run out, uh, we can activate slow motion because uh, for the second engine to properly spool up, it's pressure fed so it doesn't really spool up, but uh, to properly get going, I should say, uh, we, uh, we want to ignite that about 0 0.8 seconds before stage cutout, uh, which is what we do manually with uh, some uh, precision by slowing down time. And then once we have done the stage separation, we can just deactivate slow motion and see it go on its merry way. Again, you can do that very easily with uh, KOS or any other scripting like KRPC or whatever. Uh, but uh, rather than bore you with some programming when we want to launch rockets, I figure, well, but just slow down time instead, uh, because that, that 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 that's an automatic process of most rocket launches. There's rarely some guy just sitting with a with his hand on a button to like stage now, stage now. 
No. Uh, so uh, that's not an aspect. Yeah. Okay. So see, X science is failing us. I I hate you. Uh, we want to analyze telemetry. We want to log pressure data, and we want to log temperature from flying high over Earth's shores. Uh, e e even if it's failing us, it m may be a good idea to have it open just in case, so that we know when we are transitioning between biomes and situations. Uh, as you can see, the contract is a success. Um, we got 100 kilometers in altitude. Uh, we have also broken several milestones. Uh, with uh, with an emphasis on several, we're going to break a few more. You can see that our app apps right now is 234 kilometers, which gives us uh, a pretty high degree of confidence that even with uh, with a payload of like a bio capsule and a parachute, we should be able to bring this up above 140 kilometers easily. So that's that's all nice and dandy. Now we want to follow this all the way up to its app labs so that we get all these milestone payouts because right now we're sitting beautifully at 72,000 funds and it's only going to get higher before we're done with this. I believe there's one at 180 then perhaps one at 200 and uh, after that they start to get a bit more spares I would think. But uh, that's still uh, still pretty nice. I mean, look. Yeah, and then the next one is 300. Uh, now, did we get the space data? No, we did not. And I noticed that we have also transitioned to the forest. So uh, that's a potential issue. Uh, notice also that pressure and temperature and thermometer scans are not biome dependent uh, in space low. So for the next rocket, we kind of want to make sure that perhaps not we shouldn't bring those experiments along because they just weigh us down. Especially for our first orbital rocket, there's no point in putting a thermometer and a barometer on. But that's, uh, that's a successful launch. We are coming up on our app apps, but it's not going to give us any more unlocks or anything, so we might as well just destroy this. Thank you, number two. Now, with the science unlocks we got from all of that, it's time to consider what technologies to get next. And uh, basically what we need to get into orbit, which is of course the final goal, uh, it's all in these three branches, early, uh, the rocketry branch, uh, the material science branch, and then the avionics branch. So that's what we should invest in. Yeah, uh, the key takeaway here is that the post-war rocketry testing node and the supersonic plane development node, uh, those two together are really sufficient in doing everything that we need to do before getting to orbit. So uh, following those two expenditures, getting, uh, getting the RD-101 and the XASR-1 configurations, plus the parts from supersonic plane development, you're really free to research things uh, in any which order that you require to get the parts and configurations that you need to build your orbital rocket. So, uh, we, we can pretty much freely spend on whatever here and, and just get what we feel like because, well, we're going to need basic rocketry to get to, the, to this node. You can potentially do an orbital rocket just using that one. And we're going to want early material science to get the tank too as well to get our uh, orbit capable rocket. But uh, right now we can't afford it, but that's not a worry. Uh, we're going to afford it soon enough. Of note is that we have also gotten a lot of funds uh, following that uh, last contract that we made, that we completed. So uh, it's time to spend some more uh, into upgrades, which seems like a fine idea. 
Uh, the idea is that we want to have four points in the VAB prob probably following the next contract. But if we look at the payout of that contract, which we haven't accepted yet, uh, let's see here, suborbital and return, you can see that that's pretty much two build points. Uh, so uh, we, we, we don't have to worry about that right now, uh, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, instead, we should, I don't know what this plans thing does. Um, we should uh, start investing in R&D to make sure that we get that in a timely fashion. And uh, how low you are willing to go on funds is, uh, well, it's more or less up to you, I would say. But uh, in our case, uh, do we want to go, go daring and spend another point in R&D development? I don't know. We should probably consider what our next rocket is going to look like and what the unlock costs of that rocket is going to be before we do so. All right, after completing our suborbital recovery contract that we're currently building our third rocket to con conduct, uh, we're going to want to do a downrange contract and I know this looks like a mighty beast of a rocket because, it, well, it is. Uh, it's going to uh, use the uh, currently unlocked parts, the XASR-1, and it's going to, for its main engine down here, I think this is the RD-101, exactly. So all of this is uh, assuming we have unlocked post-war rocket retesting which is currently in the queue and due to unlock in 98 days. So we need to get our research speed up is what I'm saying, because we uh, our third rocket here is going to be done in 59 days. Uh, what is the unlock cost going to be of this rocket? Because right now we don't have anything tooled. We aren't just interested in the tooling cost of the rocket, it's also going to use two new engines that we haven't used previously, the XASR-1 and the RD-101, so we want to find the unlock cost of the, those as well. However, since we haven't actually properly researched the technologies in-game yet, we have to look up the game data files to, to see what they have to say. And the XASR-1 is going to cost 1000 funds to unlock, and the RD-101 is going to cost 5,000, so a total of 6,000 funds spent unlocking engines for this rocket. So we, we, we need to reserve money for that. We need to reserve money for the tooling of this vessel, which is another 14,000. So say that we want to float 20,000 to actually get this tooled and unlocked. And then another... Uh, what does that come out to? Another 4,000 to build it, more or less. Because we're going to pay the build cost and then five times the build cost to rush build this also. So that's a significant investment and, uh, and we should uh, probably be mindful of that, I would say. So uh, I, I think it's prudent to, to pay this to get another point in R&D, to get our research times down. down. Currently we're sitting at 59 days to finish this rocket and 79 days before we have tech to build the next rocket. But we're going to fix that slightly more by, before we finish this contract, fly this plane that we have in the queue, which will give us another build point. So, uh, so that will help. I believe. Okay, so we're in Brownsville and we've got this plane. Um, I've mentioned, and I want to reiterate, that we're running with the runway fixed DLL. So even though the runway looks uh, kind of dangerous, like what's going on down here, a third of the way, roughly. Uh, what's that? What's that all about? Is that going to hurt us? It's not, because the visual meshes for the runway are just that visual and then there's a hidden mesh that handles all the collisions for us instead. Mm, now this plane is incredibly easy to fly, which I will demonstrate by flying it. Uh, you turn it on and uh, you may want to keep SAS on 
uh, initially while on the runway and uh, after just a few meters we should see us coming oh it looks x science is back fantastic um it has a very low takeoff speed so you pretty much only had to point it the right way and because the wings are tilted somewhat uh, in, in respect to its uh its prograde vector along the ground uh, it will just naturally naturally lift so that's fine once up in the air you even have some, uh, uh, what you do is turn off SAS and then you're going to have to pitch down a bit because uh, it tends to naturally lift its nose. Anyways, uh, the crew report works is uh, rather what I would be saying um, because we, uh, we don't get the uh, film camera notice but we also have a film camera experiment that we can run for each biome we encounter. So we keep that. And then we use ship manifest to move that into the Bonanza cabin, which has a science container. Which means that we can use this for every, every biome. No need to bring multiple film cameras and no need to return this if we were to throw it away on a mission, for instance. And we will be throwing away a couple of these before this series is through and you will see that in future episodes. The purpose of us launching out of Brownsville is to hit the maximum number of biomes in a single flight that we can feasibly do. And obviously the first biome is going to be the water because it's nearby. But uh, after that we're going to start turning in lands to hit the other biomes. We should also look into completing the contract that we accepted which asks us to maintain between five and six kilometers in altitude right down here uh, and we should probably get this as well while we're flying about because uh, why not uh, it may uh, allow us to uh, perform an unlock that we otherwise otherwise may not actually afford so i want to turn around to a heading of about 250 degrees Right about so. Uh, and I should probably bring up a map on screen for this, which I will probably have done in the video. As you can see, uh, we're climbing slowly. So I wanna arrest our climb a little, so I throttle back. And uh, start picking up speed instead of altitude in this case. And we only need to hold this for another 13 seconds. Because we're in time warp, so that took for not ever. Now I've uh, opened the far window here as well. And I want to turn on the roll flight assistance. This is the only autopilot function that we will be using for this flight. Uh, but it will be enough to balance our roll which means we should ha have a straight heading because there's nothing deviating us from our course at present. And then we want to gain some altitude, which of course means that we should pitch up a little with our rudder. So we do that as well. And now it will just fly itself on the heading uh, we want it to go. So again, it's about time we put an end to the episode. Next episode I'll show you just how much science we can net ourselves using this simple plane and we'll finish up the unmanned portion of this pre-orbital playthrough with our two last sounding rockets. If you have any questions about the contents in this episode or any suggestions on how to improve the series, please leave them in the comment section below. I'm Gaspachian and I hope to see you next episode.